What's up, Michael Johnson? How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, thank you for uh, calling on the phone, picking up the phone. I know you got a huge fight this Sunday night uh, or Sunday during the day, whatever it is, against Darren Elkins, man. I'm looking forward to this fight. You know what's funny? When, when I heard this fight was announced, I thought this was the main event. I'm like, oh, this is a great main event. Elkins, Johnson, and now I'm finding out you guys are on the prelims. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> I know, right? Thank you. Exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, like, well, we got a card in St. Louis. Of course, I'm going to be the main event. Yeah, I mean, but um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think too much of it, man. It, it, it's a little BS, you know. But at the same time, I'm coming to St. Louis for war, so that's all I got to worry about. I mean, it's going to be uh, the thing about Elkins. About him, though, man, you got to give it to Elkins. The guy never quits. I was at one of his fights. When he fought um, the dude from uh, from Europe, uh, Mursad Bektik. Yeah, Mursad Bektik. Mursad Bektik. And Mursad Bektik yeah. was beating the shit out of this dude for, I mean, just they almost stopped a fight in, in the first round. Then the second round, and Elkins just comes out of nowhere. I mean, how do you prepare for a guy like this? Yeah, um, I just fought a guy like that. You, you know, in a way, so, man, I've been preparing for these guys pretty much. Uh, well, career, you know, Justin... It was a different story. You know, I'm not comparing the two, but uh, they are just the same. You know, they don't quit at all. Like, you have to go in there and uh, find a way to kill them and stop them. And that's when I went back to the John board and uh, prepared to do this fight. Now, that fight with, with Gaethje, that was a war. And you know what? Going to that fight, I'm like, you know, Michael Johnson can win this fight as long as he doesn't get sucked into a war. Uh, but, but at the same time, I know Michael Johnson... He's got that, he's a tough guy, he's a stubborn guy, and he might be the kind of guy that's like, fuck it, let's just go punch for punch. Do you look back and think, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that? Well, no, you know, um, that, was, that wasn't my initial plan, but hell, like I said, it was um, the fight, and that could have continued, you know. Um, and then I, took the, I took a pretty bad headbutt in that first round of that fight, and that kind of stalled me out a little bit of my movement for me not moving around and it took me a while to kind of find my head back and get my gears in that fight so um i was pretty much fighting eight minutes like on air you know just off of fumes and off of instinct so when you're fighting like that and you get headbutted do you know where you are are you seeing double are you lightheaded i have no idea man next thing i know we were I was in the middle of the cage with him, and next thing I know, I'm my back's against the cage, and, uh, and you know, I'm just trying to, like, find my legs, and I'm trying to, like, see where he's at at the same time. There's just so much going on, and, you know, and a lesser fighter would have stopped and took a pause, but, you know, um, that, that's not me. You know, I took the head button, I, like I said, and he pounced on me right away. So, um, you know, I, I'm not one to, you know, stop the fighter, take a timeout. No, nobody will ever question your heart. Now, do you uh, were you surprised that Eddie Alvarez was able to beat Justin Gaethje? No, I wasn't surprised at all. Um, you know, they were they had deemed the most violent man between those two guys or whatever, and um, I knew that Eddie was gonna um, put it on him like that. Man, I've trained with Eddie so many years and talk about one guy that doesn't quit and has the biggest heart in the world. You know, you're looking at him right there. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's awesome. Now, another fight that everyone talks about was your fight with Khabib. That was a fight you were winning the striking, and I think a lot of people, when they think of Khabib and they think about how he might lose to Conor McGregor, they look at your fight with Khabib and go, well, Michael Johnson hurt him, Michael Johnson was beating him, and if Conor McGregor can do that to him, what are your thoughts about McGregor versus Khabib? Um, I, I see it as the same way. Um, as long as Connor stays away from him and doesn't go to the ground, um, you know, he'll be in good shape. Uh, that was the issue of mine. You know, um, I got a little bit too uncomfortable in that fight, and I just uh, let him get a hold of me. But, you know, that's exactly how I see it going. Connor can get the win, but he needs to stay off the ground. Like, if he goes to the ground with that guy, there's no coming back. Now, the thing about Khabib, because uh, you're a college wrestler. You're, you're a very good wrestler. Uh, and, but Khabib, when he grabbed you, it was like, did he have like gorilla strength? Was it, have you ever been kind of yeah. manhandled like that before? I've, I've, I've never been, gra I've never been like held down like that. It wasn't so much of his grip, it was more of his pressure. 
you know, um, I, it's just when he gets uh, his pressure and those hands locked, um, then it's a different story. You know, um, he took a few shots at me, and I just threw him aside and kind of got out of the way, but he just kept going and his relentless thing. So, um, you know, his takedowns from, like, shooting aren't as good as what people think. It's just when he gets that body lock and he gets on top of you, um, it's like a it's like a two o fiver. Wow, it's like a two o fiver. That's I mean like that's the thing with Khabib and Connor. I'm like you know what I, I, I'm going to be rooting for Khabib if they fight, but I do worry that his head is straight up. He just and he, and he walks forward and Connor hits so fucking hard that I do kind of wonder if he's kind of tailor made for him in some ways. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can see that as well, but. Um... Khabib can take a punch, you know, but I didn't have all my weight behind the, tag, the, the times I tagged him, you know, because I was kind of looking for him to shoot on me, so I wasn't, you know, fully comfortable, but uh, yeah, that's a credible fight. I, I hope it happens, but like we all say, and we all know, that's a big if, a big and Connor picks his fight very well, and he knows who's dangerous and who's not, and Khabib is a very dangerous guy. No, I, I, I could see him fighting Tony before he fights Khabib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I hear you. I would love to see it, though. Um, now, when, when he was on top of you and he was talking to you and he was like, sir, you must quit. It is my time. Like, what were you thinking? Like, is this guy out of his fucking mind? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I wasn't even um, thinking or paying attention to it. You know, um, we're going back and forth. He said something like, oh, just quit. And I think I said, fuck you. I'm not going anywhere. And I kind of smacked <laughs> him back a little bit and trying to get up. So, um, you know, it was funny. Um, it was kind of funny to me, but, um, you know, you can tell that, you know, he had a lot of frustration to let out. Well, I mean, look, I mean, some of your wins, I mean, you not, when you knocked out Dustin Poirier, you know, I called up, uh, I, I called up uh, Rashad Evans because I, I, I actually put money on you for that fight. I was, I was like, Rashad, how does uh, – actually, I didn't put money on you. I put money on nobody because I was like, Rashad, how's uh, – uh, how's Michael Johnson look? He's like, as long as he does what he what he's supposed to do, he's gonna he's gonna win. And then I called up uh, Dean Thomas, and he goes, Dustin Poirier is close to one hundred percent of a lock that you'll ever see in sports. And I'm like, oh, gee, all right, now I'm not betting. But I mean, when you knocked out Poirier, was that you think one of your career highlights? Was that just the, the most amazing feeling in the world? Um, it was definitely a career highlight for me because it was um, a first-round knockout in a big main event against a guy that was climbing the ranks and lightweight and, uh, and it's been around forever. And um, it's just incredible. You know, so that was definitely one of my highlights. But um, I was very confident going into that fight, and um, I knew we were going to come out with a win. You know, I've had bigger fights in my career, but um, – not too many big victories like that one. That was a big one. Oh, that was, that, that was a great fight. Now, after that fight, um, did you have a girlfriend? Did you get tons of chicks, threesomes? What happened? <laughs> no, uh, no threesomes or anything like that. You know, I still, I still got my girl. We were still together. And, um, nice. you know, so she gave me some loving. But mm. the, the nice, sensual loving you get from your girlfriend, you know. How long you have uh, You're a married man, though. I forgot. I know, dude. Yeah. I know. That's why I have to live vicariously through you, bro. I, I have to, like, uh, I'm over. I'm done. I mean, I don't. I mean, I got laid last night, but, I, you know, I get laid when I want to get laid, you know, versus uh, when I can get laid. Uh, sometimes, like, the chase... Uh, forget me. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, now, how long have you had this girlfriend for? Uh, man, it's been a long, long time, man, for about uh, going on seven years almost, wow. seven years. So. How, now, does she want you to get married? Yeah, it's talked about it. It's talked about marriage, talked about kids and everything like that. And, um, they, you know, I'm sure we'll take that step pretty soon. <laughs> what do you mean um, this talks about it? What, what, man, what, what, I don't know. I don't know how you marry guys do it. You know, the one thing I hear, the one common thing I hear from every married guy and you probably probably have heard this before you got married. They all look at me with a straight face and go, don't do it. The, those guys are... And all, no. always looking at them like, like, what the fuck are you telling me don't do it for? Why do you do it then? Like, I don't get it. Look, here's look. Those guys had... Look, a lot of times guys get married before they're successful or before they're good at something. Then they get successful and they go, oh shit, I could be fucking all these chicks right now. What you got, as, as long as you get enough pussy before you're married, like, 
you're okay. Like sometimes when I, when I when I can't sleep, I'll count women that I, I bang. <laughs> you know, like they, they're all they're all humping over a fence. The Mexicans are jumping higher. Okay, but 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 oh but, but I'm saying, but that's of course they do. But that's what you got to do. You got to make sure that it's out of your system. Uh, so as and I know you. Look, you're a college athlete. You're a high school football phenom. You you lived in Florida. You got all the Cuban chicks. You probably got it out of your system, right? It's getting there. <laughs> it's, good. it's getting okay. That's good. Well, good. Now, Nate Diaz. How much shit did Nate talk during your fight? Uh, you know, he didn't talk that much shit. You know, he was pointing and, and, and doing his little clowning around and whatnot. But um, you know, I, I lost track in that fight as well. That was another one. But uh, yeah, he's a little shit talker, and whenever he's gonna fight again, that's the fight that I want back. Was was it was he cool with you after? I let the, him get away. Was he cool after the fight with you? Were you were you guys cool afterwards? Yeah, yeah, we were cool afterwards. We sat and talked to the back, and he uh, he told me a crazy story about how my brother was about to, uh, to whoop him and his uh, or his whole little entourage. My brother saw him in the lobby or something like that. <laughs> hey, my brother is this is huge, fucking like six three, like two fifty pound dude so you know he told me that story in the back and we laughed about it so um wait you know, hold on wait what's this wait your brother is your, is your brother an athlete is he a fighter no no he used to uh do some sports back in the day but uh no he did not anything like that he was in the army for a little bit so now he's just um he just works and he's a dad six so, kids six <laughs> kids damn so he went up to nate diaz and was like don't fuck with my brother <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. He was he was in on that one. And and then what and then what I mean Nate probably talked shit back.